Rob asked that for this first Sunday that we treat him as a guest pastor. So uh, we said, all right, this first week, but next week, you got to start earning your key. <laughs> so you're going to see a lot of familiar faces up here um, as we help as some of your lay people help with the service. So let me um, open us up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the opportunity to gather in your name this morning and to worship you. It's a beautiful day in your kingdom, and we give thanks to you for all that you do for us. We're also thankful for the addition of Pastor Rob and Donna to our church family, and we ask for your blessings on them as they start their ministry in paradise. We look forward to doing your work with them in the weeks and months to come. We ask that you protect us during this worship service and grant us understanding of your word and message for us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, announcements. I've got two or three, and then I'll see what, what the, you guys have. We'll have prayer group Tuesday morning at 9 uh, here in the Family Center. Uh, Pastor Rob plans to be at the church on Tuesdays from 8 to 4, and he'll start that this week. So he's invited everybody or whoever wants to to if you'd like, stop in and see him and visit. I think he offered coffee, maybe. So. And then um, we have started coffee time back. It starts at 10.30 every Sunday morning. There's a sign-up sheet at the back if you'd be willing to bring a pastry and some fruit or something. But ladies, we're keeping it simple. <laughs> we don't need a full breakfast, so please don't feel like it needs to be um, that you're feeding everybody. It's just a snack and time for fellowship. So if you would be willing to do that, please sign up at the back. And I think that's all I have. Any other announcements? Sunday school, anything? Uh, Sunday school, we're still working on Words of Life by Adam Hamilton. We're on Chapter 8. We're meeting at 945 here, or if you'd like to join us via Zoom, let me know and I'll send you the link. And then our mission opportunities for July. For the food pantry this month, we're collecting canned vegetables. They have asked that we not provide corn or green beans because they have someone who supplies them with all that they need. But any other kind of veggies would be welcome. And then the monetary collection for July will be the Christmas store at Grace Community Church, which is located here in Smithville. So, uh, if you will, if, you're, if you'll stand if you're able, and we'll sing um, America the Beautiful, uh, 696 in the hymnal, and we'll sing all verses.
non-bold, you speak the bold. We come to you this day with burdens and cares in our hearts. Lord, take these burdens from us and ease our souls. We come to you this day with fear and uncertainty about the future. Lord, calm our fears and help us to place our trust in you. Come, let us worship God whose love is abundant. Let us praise the God of our salvation who watches over us all. Amen. Stand if you're able and we'll sing Since Jesus Came Into My Heart and it's page 2140 and it's verses 1, 2, and 5. Thank you. 
patients are moving together, so keep them in your prayers this next month for yes. patients. Who should we be praying for? All of you. <laughs> Please be with Tracy's niece as she undergoes um, birthing a new baby, and, and may they both come through this safely and healthy. Please be with all the joys that we mentioned, those that are here with us today that haven't been, and those that are back into their more normal roles within the church. Those are always such a blessing. And thank you so much for keeping Sierra safe and help her on this journey. Dear Lord, guide each of us this week and help us to see where we can reach out to those around us. Let us all join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into Is that, is that everybody? 
okay? Are you sure you can get up from there? You're going to be a dog. Well, good, good morning, kids. Good morning. Sir. How are you? Good. So what has changed? What is different from the last time you were here for a kid's message? I may be addressing this just to Lexi. I don't know if the rest of you have been up here before. What, it, what is different since the last time you were here for a kid's message? Kids appear to have gotten a lot older. <laughs> Anything else? What, what else has changed? What, what is different? Here we go. Here we go. Wait, you don't say it. I'm different, right? Some, some would say I'm really different. But uh, yeah, that's, this is, I'm different. I'm, I'm a different, I'm a new pastor, a new guy. The last time we did this, probably Pastor Terry was doing this. So that's, that's different. Different. That's called change. Can you say change? Change. change. Say, say it all together. Change. change. Very good. So that's a, that's a change. And do you think that you have maybe changed anything in your life? Do you do you remember changing? Maybe some of you. Uh, do you, do any of you still wear diapers? I don't know if you should ask them. <laughs> not, probably not wear diapers anymore, right? Uh, not okay. So you, you're, you're, you're wearing long pants. Some of you are wearing long pants. Some are not. But to, so that's different. Okay. Do you still do you eat baby food? Do you eat out of a bottle? No. No. Okay. So that's that's a change that you. So we all we all change as we as we grow. This is a sign that you're getting older. That you're that you're becoming an adult. Um, in our lesson from the Bible this morning that we're going to have. Jesus healed a man who was in really bad shape. This guy was, was dirty, he was hurting, he was sick, and Jesus healed him of this. He changed him. He transformed him into being well, healthy, and in good shape again. That's called change. That's a transformation that, uh, that he did. And it was good. It was a good thing for him to change. Good thing for him to be transformed. So what we learned today from this message is when Jesus comes into our life, kind of like Solomon just said, when Jesus comes into our life, we can't help but change. And it is always for good when Jesus comes into our life and helps us change. Okay? Now, can you help me with a prayer? All right. So let's put our hands together, bow our heads, and close our eyes. Repeat after me. You ready? Dear God, Dear God, you're awesome. You're, you're awesome. awesome. I didn't hear that. You need to be a little loud. You are awesome. You're, you're awesome. awesome. Thank you for this day. Thank, Thank you for this day. day. Thank you for Jesus. Thank, Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus changing our lives. Thank, Thank you for Jesus changing our lives. In his name we pray. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. I'm going to get some treat.
Help us to send this out to the world to reach your goals. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Those who had seen that told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. And all the people of the region of the saints asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. And he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demon had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. And the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Now, it's uh, indeed a blessing that I am here to introduce Pastor Ralph Turner. Father, we ask for your strength and your guidance this morning. We ask that you would place words in my mouth which would be pleasing to you. Be with those who are sitting here and uh, have them receive the words that you want them to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. So good morning, saints. Good morning, sinners. Good morning. We just wanted to see what kind of, what kind of balance we have here in this morning. Um, one of my first uh, preaching classes, our old professor gave us some wise advice, which I've tried to follow. He said, when you get to a new appointment, Never preach your best sermons first. <laughs> Leave them for later on when you're going to need them for something. Maybe you, you know, you're getting some trouble or something. So don't expect to hear any good sermons right off the bat. Okay? So they'll be later on when we, when we need them. <clears throat> good to be with you this morning. We're honored to, uh, honored to be a part of this community of faith. This story that uh, Shay just read from Luke, with all of its uh, depth and its layers and its nuance, has always fascinated me. Um, but the first thing that I have to wrap my head around when I, when I look at this story is, what's up with these pigs? Now, both Donna and I are born and bred Arkansas Razorbacks. Woo pig, go hogs. Uh, I know, I know. And now we're in the same uh, conference. Uh, so this means that we have a particular affinity for all things pigs and hogs and swine, right? Now, if you don't know what a razorback is, a razorback is a little, wild, nasty, mean pig. So that's what a razorback is, in case you're wondering. So please indulge me as we spend some time exploring the plight of these pigs this morning. Over in Mark's Gospel, he tells the same story, but he tells us there's about 2,000 of them. There's about 2,000 of these pigs, so that's a lot of pork belly. There they were, they were out running on the hillside, minding their own business, doing whatever pigs do, when all of a sudden they were filled with demons, which made them crazier than well, wild pigs. Then they all jumped off a cliff, and for a brief moment, pigs could fly. <laughs> right before gravity took over, they hit the water. Now, they must have been Baptist pigs, or at least Episcopalians, since they wandered in this water so bad. <laughs> so what about the people who own these pigs? Well, they're they have just likely just lost their complete livelihood. I wonder, did they have insurance to cover demon pig possession, do you think? What about the deductible was on an insurance policy like that? I, I wonder about things like that. And it appears that these townspeople did too. And it was all this stranger's fault. This Galilean preacher stepped right off the boat into some business he had no business stepping into. What did he know about pigs anyway? He is a Jew from Nazareth. To him and the men who were with him, pigs were of no use whatsoever. In fact, they were unclean, they were filthy, they were full of disease as far as these guys were concerned. 
This Jesus character had probably never even tasted a grilled pork chop. He never had a sausage biscuit for breakfast. He never had any of those fall off the bone baby back ribs from Wabash Barbecue we were talking about earlier. He's never tried any pigs in a blanket. He's never had a plate of eggs with bacon. He's never had some tasty pulled pork. Why, he's never enjoyed a lean tender slice of pork roast in his life, or a ham and cheese sandwich, or a BLT, as far as that goes. What does this Jesus know for pigs? But he sails in here, he climbs off the boat. The first thing he does is he sends these swine to a watery, squealing death. For the folks in this Gentile hillside community called Gergisa, on the eastern shore of Lake Galilee, their comfortable little lives have immediately jumped off the cliff with these swine. That's what these townspeople were saying anyway. Believe me, that's what they were saying. Everything was nice and comfy and cozy before you got here, Jesus. Well, at least it was managing. We didn't need you coming in here and changing anything. We were doing just fine, thank you very much. Everybody except this crazy cat out there living in the cemetery. It appears that the townspeople are much more concerned about the loss of these boars and these sows and these piglets than they are about this naked, homeless, crazy fellow out living in the tombs. They, don't, they didn't worry much about him because they had him mostly figured out. They couldn't do much with him, but they at least knew what to expect from him. It's true that he seemed to be in a lot of pain sometimes, and he howled at the moon, and he was dirty, and he, was, he stayed beat up and bruised, running around tripping over headstones and foot markers. But mostly, he was harmless to them if they left him alone, even if he was hurting them. He named himself after a Roman legion, which was comprised of 6,000 troops. As it seems to him, there are at least 6,000 demonic soldiers having a battle inside his head. As it turns out, these demons weren't too appreciative of Jesus either. They begged to stay where they were, in the graveyard, inside this all but dead man who was their host. When they realized that that was not to be, then they begged not to be sent back where they had come from, the abyss, the wilderness, the bottomless pit, but rather into this mountainside herd of swine. They would rather go there. And just like the townspeople, these demons protested. And like the townspeople, this demonic infestation claimed that the preacher from Nazareth had stepped right up the boat into some business he had no business stepping into. It seems that demons don't like change all that much either. Change. Such a small word with great expectations. It's been said that the only people who really like change are wet babies. And even then, it's somewhat disagreeable to them. Change is hard. As human beings, we normally don't like change, but it is inevitable. It is constant. Change is related to growth, as we talked about in the children's message. If you don't change, you don't grow. If we don't change, we don't see, hear, feel, know, or go toward anything more than we are right now. In order to gain in any way, we must change what is now. We are, in fact, changing all the time. From now, to right now, to right now, we have changed. We have inhaled, exhaled, blinked, yawned, <coughs> swallowed, sighed, twitched, thought about breakfast, thought about lunch, pumped some blood, maybe lost a brain cell or two. Some of us lose those more than others. <coughs> We can't help but change. And so we are afraid. For the better or for the worse, we all change, whether we like it or not. But quite naturally, we are scared of change because we are scared of the unknown. That's why the most repeated phrase we hear from Jesus in the Bible, anybody know it? 
What did Jesus say more often than anything in the Bible? Don't be afraid. Because wherever Jesus goes, change happens. Things do not remain the same. And folks are uneasy with that. Just go back a few verses from the scripture that we just read. You will find the story of what happened on the boat ride across Lake Galilee to where this pigtail takes place. Go back and check it out. Remember the story? These fearless disciples, these professional fishermen, called upon the master to save them from drowning in a storm. So he does. By calming the very wind and the water around them. This type of power over nature was an unknown to them. This upset their little apple cart. This was a change in the natural order of things. And so they were afraid, more afraid of him than they were of the storm. When Jesus preached before his friends and family in Nazareth, he told them that he had come to fulfill the scriptures, that God in the flesh was standing right there in front of them. This type of authority was unknown to them. It was something new. They didn't know how to handle it. This was a change in the natural order of things. And so they were afraid to the point of trying to throw him off a cliff. Now it's happening again. Jesus is doing what Jesus does. He's casting out demons. He's restoring loads of lost souls to the kingdom of God. It is an, an unknown to these Gentile garrisons. It is foreign to them. A few pigs are lost in the process. This upsets the status quo. It disrupts the economic viability and social norms of this little community. For them, it is a change in the natural order of things. They are afraid. More afraid of him than that crazy man living in the tombs. More afraid of him than this person that he has healed. They are afraid of this change, and so they ask him to leave, and he does. But not before this new disciple is sent to proclaim the good news to his own people. Change is scary. My very first appointment was as a supply pastor even before I got the license to preach, <clears throat> to the Sydney, Arkansas, United Methodist, Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Try to get all that on your sign up front. It's what's called a dual denominational church, part United Methodist, part Cumberland Presbyterian. See, sometime about eight years ago, there were two churches, but one of them burned down. The one remaining church was gracious enough to invite the other church to come worship with them, and they did. And they liked it so much that they never separated. When we were appointed there in 2009, there were 18 members, 11 Presbyterians and 7 Methodists. Attendance was almost always 100%. Can you imagine if we had 100% attendance today? The Methodist preacher, me, preached one week. The Presbyterian preacher came in preached the following week. We alternated. One week the Methodists got the offering, the next week the Presbyterians got the offering. The Presbyterians sat on one side, the Methodists sat on the other side. If a Baptist happened to wander in, we'd set him up in the choir loft. <laughs> it was a comfortable and cozy arrangement. One time we decided to do some congregational visitation in Little Sydney, Arkansas. Not in about, I don't know, 100 people there, maybe. We decided we'd go amongst the townspeople and invite a few of the locals to our little country cozy church. So we put together a list of folks in the area and decided one particular evening we'd get together and we'd go visiting two by two. That's how Jesus sent folks out. Then come back to church and, and talk about what happened over some coffee and snacks. You always got to have some coffee and snacks to come back to. And off we went, about four or five couples, Donna and I being one of them. A couple of the older ladies stayed behind, watched the food. When Don and I visited, finished our visits that evening, we were the first couple to arrive back at the church. We were pretty excited. We thought we'd made some inroads. Done pretty good. We visited three places. The response was good. We were optimistic about having some new people in our little country cozy church services. We were talking with one of the little ladies we'd left at the church. Her name was Donna, too. We were all gushing a little about how nice it would be to see some different faces in worship and, and 
more people singing and how we need to make room for them in the choir and on and on. Then it was like a light bulb went off over Donna Toon's head. She stopped in mid-sentence and her face got white as a sheet. She took a gasping breath and she said, what if they come? <laughs> this was going to change the natural order of things at the Sydney United Methodist Covenant of Presbyterian Church. This was going to be scary. We've got some changes ahead of us, too. You're going to have to get used to a new preacher. I don't think I showed you my, my patriotic socks, didn't I? Did I show you? some changes coming our way as we re-enter re the world from the season of COVID, which we've been in the past year, year and a half almost. Things will never be the way they once were. Sorry, but they're not. For us individually or us as a community of faith, they're not going to be the way they were. We have changed. We will continue to change. And that's a little scary. It's all Jesus' fault. It's all your fault, Lord. Because when Jesus comes into your life, in one way or another, change comes with him. It's not just a one-time change. It keeps happening. Because as we mentioned earlier, when we stop changing, we stop growing. How we deal with change will guide our futures in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, if you haven't heard, is right here, right now. How we deal with that guides those futures. Believe it or not, God's got a plan. We all say, oh, I'd like to know what God's plan is. I don't think I would. My head would, would explode. Here's what it is. It would be way too scary for me to know what God's got planned for me. My goodness, just the things that has happened in my life over my short 39 years has been scary. But I believe this change is under God's complete control. You know, Jesus came to this world to set the captives free, to give us an abundant life, to fulfill the law, to seek and save the lost. And with all of this comes change. Not in Christ, not in God, because God's faith is steadfast. It never changes. God's love for us never changes. Did you know that God cannot love you any more than God loves you right now? It's total, maxed out, 100%. Nothing you can do to make God love you any more than God loves you right now. The change we seek is in the world around us. That is our challenge as United Methodists. Do you remember what the Methodist logo is? To make disciples of Christ for the transformation of the world. That's what transformation means. Change. Who knows? The crazy person inside all of us might be tamed. All of our wild pigs might run off. What we once thought was normal in our little worlds won't be normal anymore. If we do what he says, Jesus will turn our little worlds upside down. And that's a little scary. But it's a world he will show us how to overcome. You know why? Because he's done it already. So fear not, Jesus says. Don't be afraid. No little change. Don and I are excited to be a part of this change with you. Together, we will go and tell the story 
of what God is doing for us. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father, you are so awesome. We praise you for this day. We praise you for the opportunity to be together in this way, in this new world that you have placed us in. We're a little scared. We're a little frightened. But we have you as our leader and God. You who sent your son, Jesus Christ, to walk amongst us and show us how to do this. Show us how to live. Show us how to die. Show us the way to eternal life through his glorious resurrection. We thank you for that. We give you the honor and the glory. Amen. One thing that hasn't changed over the past to millennia is the sacrament of Holy Communion. This sacrament which Jesus ordained, the other by the way that we celebrated the Methodist Church being baptism, has remained virtually the same as it began in that upper room in Jerusalem the night before Jesus was crucified. It is not only a link to what Jesus and the disciples did that night, but it is also to all who have partaken of this sacrament over the past 2,000 years. It links us to that very Monday Thursday, as we call it. It links us to that sacrament. Most of us participated in this sacrament probably about 30 days ago. We did that with Pastor Terry, as most United Methodists did. It's one thing which connects us not only as Christians, but as United Methodists. You broke bread and drank the cup together. Don and I broke the bread and drank the cup with the folks at the Compton. It unites us. And now we come together again as a new family. We're, we're kind of adopted into that family, but, but we're claiming it nonetheless. It's the same with the family of Christ all over the world. We are now adoptees into that family. Here in this holy place, we do one of the many things which binds us together in Christian love. And that is to celebrate around this table as one family. Would you turn with me to page 12 of your United Methodist hymnal as I prepare the table for you? <laughs> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who, who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now if you go across the page to the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. 
You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. Blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate the sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks to God. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, take this and eat this. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. And he gave thanks to God, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take this and drink this, all of you. This is the covenant that I have made to cover your sins, to cover the sins of many cover the sins which came before you, to cover your sins and the sins of all those to come. Drink this. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering to us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly bed. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We obviously have not rehearsed this. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, uh, <clears throat> what we have planned is about three options for you. <clears throat> One is that I will take the loaf in my sterile gloved hands. And as you come to a seed, I will put a torn off piece of loaf into your hand. And you may either take a cup or you may dip your bread in a cup in that way. And David's going to hold the cup. Also available are some prepackaged elements if you would like to do that. So those are our options today if you would like to participate in any way that you feel led to participate. Okay. Is there any instruction that I have forgotten to give? Because okay, we good. All right. The invitation has been given. The table has been set. Would you come? David, you need to come to the second question. We're going to sign the sign? No, we'll start up for a second. Oh, okay.
Been served and wish to be served. <clears throat> we are honored to be here as your new pastor. We're humbled by the uh, appointment that uh, Melissa has heard most graciously given to us. I don't know if some of you know the story or not, but we actually picked this church out about a year and a half ago. We were driving through the area, um, and we knew we were going to retire around here somewhere near the kids who were in Liberty, and we drove to Smithfield Lake to scope out the lake. Drove by the church and said, wouldn't it be great, wouldn't it be great if, uh, if we could be at that church? And, and she, in fact, had us thumbtack to the wall, too, when she heard that we were coming this way, she had already uh, put a thumbtack to my face and attached it to us. <laughs> that's what they do, they just throw darts. <laughs> we didn't know that. That's, 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 that's how we do Ask the bishop. Ask the bishop about that sometimes. <laughs> but we are honored to be here. Um, I will ask for preemptive uh, forgiveness. You know what that is? Um, I don't know if, if it happened to you when you were a kid or not, but once in a while when I left the, left the house for school or wherever it was going, my dad would give me a bam <clears throat> out the door. And I said, what's that for? He said, that's in case, that's when you get in trouble later on during the day. So I would ask for preemptive forgiveness, forgiveness for all the times that we will mess up and that we will not do things right. Uh, I'll ask for uh, permission uh, from you right now for that. And, uh, I hope that it will be received. Uh, in our, we had a, a meeting the 24th. A few folks here went over a few things. And uh, my last question to the group was, what is one thing that I need to be, uh, that I need 
things to be aware of or need to do within the next six months. There are three things that came up. One was care, another was connect, another was communicate. I thought, man, that is a great start to setting goals and mission. We will care for you. We will connect with you. We will communicate with you. And I hope that you will do the same thing uh, with us. Most of all, we'll love you. That's, that's the least that we are asked to do, is to love God and to love each other. So we will do that as well. Thank you for being here this morning. And um, I'll, I'll try to earn my keep next week this week, okay? <laughs> Would you? Yes. Oh, we have a song. I was about to dismiss. <laughs> One more minute, then we'll let you. Oh, it is my favorite. By the way, you'll be hearing this song a lot. This is my favorite song. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably remind you of this more than you want to know. But uh, if I go before you do, make sure to play this song at my funeral. Okay? Uh, I don't want any of the slow songs. This will, this will be the slowest song I want at my funeral. Okay? You remember that song. All right, so let's stand and sing.